Welcome back. Today we will be investing a full hour into watching cops mess with the wrong people. So get comfy because this one is gonna keep you on the edge of your seat. This up is footage of when the auditor for First Amendment strike team was casually taking pictures of the police department when it was approached by an officer who identifies as Officer Romero. This officer quickly regretted what he did after he learned his consequences. Hey there. How are you? Excuse me, sir. What are you doing? Hey. Hey. I'm asking you a question. Who are you? Why are you taking pictures of the department? Sir. Don't touch me. Okay. I'm going to put you in cuffs. Okay. okay. You're going to be put in cuffs. Supervisor. Okay. Supervisor's on his way. Okay. I'm asking you questions hey, here. Hey guys, I'm being arrested right now, being put in cuffs for uh, taking pictures of the police department. Don't turn my phone off. Okay, you are not in control here. I am, actually. You work for me, I don't work for 46, you. 46, I got one in custody over here. I need a supervisor. Hey, you're gonna lose your job, buddy. It's illegal detainment. Can you please call a supervisor out here? This is an illegal detainment under 163103. Okay. Hang out here. You don't have permission to search me, I don't consent to any searches or seizures. Okay, I'm waiting for a supervisor to come up here. Okay, that's fine. Okay. What's your name and badge number? Romero, Romero. 0702. Okay, sounds okay. good. Did you stop my video camera over there? Uh, you can, I'm not messing with your phone, okay? Can you uh, tell this officer to take his hands off me and to uncuff me? No, I don't want to tell him anything. Okay. You'll yeah, wait till the supervisor gets here, and you can talk to him from there, okay? Right, I'm done talking to you guys then. Okay. So what's up? He's taking pictures of the department, taking pictures of all our stuff here, so I don't know what he's doing. I'm trying to talk to him, he's not talking to me, he starts walking away. Is that a reason to cuff me? Yeah, you're being detained right now. Yeah. For what? For what crime? Yeah. No, it's re reasonable suspicion. Of what crime? Okay. You have to have reasonable suspicion of a crime to detain okay. somebody. I am not going to speak to you. That's you can fine. speak to my supervisor when he gets here. You have me in cuffs right now. Okay, yeah. You're so being detained talking. at the moment. Yeah. Because you're a uh, you're you're ass. Officer Romero didn't even wait a minute before arresting the auditor. He was hostile from the moment he stepped out of his vehicle. The auditor knows all his rights and has done nothing wrong. Then the watching commander arrives. So then he comes over, he starts taking pictures. Oh, it looks like he's mm -hmm. taking pictures of these signs. I don't know if he's taking pictures of these cars. He's or what part of an organization called the First Amendment Strike Team. Is he? Yeah, okay. so he's trying to see what we're going to do. Okay. He has every right to do that. Okay, and that's fine with that. Yeah. I, I, mean, I, don't, I don't have any Uncuff him. Uh, I Uncuff like him. Right now. Huh? I did nothing wrong. I was not breaking the law. This officer just illegally detained me under CRS 163-103. I've seen your video, sir, and I know okay. exactly what you're talking about. Uh, who am I? Um, First Amendment strike team. Okay. I know exactly who you are. Exactly. Um, so you know I'm not out here doing anything illegal. I do. No nothing. I do. Um, and I like to file a complaint against this officer for deprivation of rights. You guys uh, call Pueblo uh, Police Department and complain about yeah. Officer Romero, badge number 0706. He just detained me uh, and said that he was detaining me because I chose not to answer his questions. Um, I'm not really sure on how that works. I, I have to look at the policy on that. I believe that there's a charge. Here's uh, Sergeant Reyes, he's the supervisor on the watching banner. This auditor is definitely in the right, and the fact that the watching commander was quick to put his officer in line and get him out of cuffs was proof that the officer did break the law. Let's take a look at how the supervisor reacts to this incident. Real quick, there, you have to submit a Freedom of Information Act for the body cam video. There's a charge. I'm not sure what the charge is. Okay. Um, but I'm going to find out. I'm sure uh, records can probably tell me. Yeah, I'm going to call just so you know now. Thank you, man. I appreciate all your help. What's your name, sir? Oh, I'm not to Okay. The auditor wanted to seek justice and that is exactly what he did. He filed a complaint against the officer and also sued the city. The auditor got a settlement of $41,000 for being illegally detained for five to six minutes. How's that for an hourly pay? Moving on, on August 20th of 2020 in Somerville, South Carolina, officer Robert Barano had stopped a man named Timmy Miles, whom they believed was buying weed from drug dealers. I know what you picked up over there, okay? What I picked up? Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't want no well, Come on. Get out of the car. 
what, what, no, on, I ain't getting out the car until y'all tell me what's going on. We're now. about to tell you what's going on. Come on no, out. No, bro. What, what, what's going on? I, let me record this. Y'all got y'all. What, what, what y'all got y'all yeah, camera on? Yeah, we're recording right now, so come on out. What's going on? We got the camera on. Yeah, come on out. Come on out. Oh, no, no, no. Don't grab me. Don't grab me. Don't grab me. Well, we're telling you, giving you a lawful order. If you don't get out, you're about to get ripped out of the car. Well, go ahead. So don't. I got a back problem. Don't rip me out. I'm not trying to do that, so come on out. Come on out. Out, we'll explain car. it We're to you. We're gonna tell you, dude. Come on, step out of the car. If, if, let me go. No, I'm not letting you go. Bro, let uh, me this go. This is your last bro. chance, man. No. You're... Get the. 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 Timmy repeatedly said that he didn't know what was going on, implying the officers didn't tell him why they were all there and stopping him. Also, Officer Barano had no reason to choke Timmy like that. Whether he was getting out of the car or not, you don't ever grab someone by the neck like that and not call it unlawful use of force. Yeah, boy, punch me in my face. I gotta go back into my front my children and my grandchildren. And they gonna have, I'm gonna have a guy. He called y'all what a black cop there. Hey, girl, yeah, black. Black. He can say I'm the superior. You a lie. Get out of my face, man. Mm -hmm. You a lie. You a lie. You in my face. Let's see what he's done. We can go in that way. You in my face for nothing. How you understand? Let me put you in your face. What you understand there? You yelling and not doing anything. Cause I'm mad, bruh. I get that. But you're mad inside your head. No, I ain't nobody be mad. Fart I bet I'm older than you, bruh. Sure Thank you. Now why not be mad? I'll pay my money. Stop yelling. I don't now. care. My kids up there. Okay. You want to act like this is one of your kids? Exactly. Hey, stop, bruh, stop, bruh. Stop. They will be mad pissed if I come back with a car, bruh. The officers seem to be wasting time standing around while Timmy is venting to them and demanding answers for why they used so much unnecessary force to remove him from his vehicle. Then he called them out for it. Oh, no, no, he no. refused to get out of the car. He refused to get out of the car. I, I went like, oh, oh, this man grabbed me first. I said, like, why are you grabbing me? I got a right for my rights now. Come on now. This so, it's so much going on. Y'all, come on. Y'all could have been, been nicer about the situation, man. We, we you, you behind me. I did the right oh, thing. Oh. I stopped. You start asking me questions like, oh, I'm like, what the going on? And then you order me to get out the car for what? I don't support to step out of my comfort zone. Come on, y'all know better than that. This man choking me. I got people that died over choking this shit. I got grandbabies and children. The good news is that you're alive and you're kicking the game. I'm wrong. It's wrong, man. It's wrong, for real. You ain't no been to choking me, bruh. That brought back a lot of flashbacks, bruh. You going down for that one, for real? On oh, everything, you going down to protect my life, you going down. For choking me, you going down. They then asked if they could search his car and he knew he's done nothing wrong, so there was no reason for it. But these cops were persistent. They ended up doing this. I appreciate it. 
Thank you. So, on August 15th of 2022, officers were on the lookout for a white truck that was involved in an armed robbery. An NMSP officer who goes by the name Emmanuel Rodriguez had located the truck and initiated a felony stop. Let's take a look at how this interaction went. Lincoln 756, suspecting that uh, robbery. 76 and 106. Hey, let me see you get out! Put your hands up! Open the door! Put your hands up! Walk back! No, hey, no! Open, let me see your hands! Walk out! Walk out! Walk back! Let me lift up your shirt! Turn around! Lift up your shirt and turn around! Walk back! Turn around, walk back! Get on your knees! Hands on your head! Stay right there, keep your hand on your head. Up. Walk back this way. Stand right here. You got any weapons on you? Hey, you gonna poke me, stick me? No? After the officers put him in handcuffs, they identified him as Adam Pacheco. Then they asked him about his whereabouts and were shocked to find out that he was at school. Adam is Powaki Valley High School's star quarterback and he was nothing but compliant. So it's only fair that Officer Rodriguez explains why this is all happening to him. Who's this truck registered to? This is my truck. This is my dad's. Your dad's? His name's Adam Pacheco. Okay, who's Lisa? Lisa. That's my stepmom. Where's she at? Yeah. Where? Uh, no, uh, what's it called? That's the, that's the movie theater. Let me see it? Yeah, let me see it. After the officers do a little more digging, they actually seem to realize that Adam isn't the guy they were looking for. It seems like his stepmom may be in a bit of trouble though. Let's see what she has to say when her son calls her with the cops. You got nothing on, no weapons? No? I'm gonna take off the handcuffs, sir. Uh, I don't know. So, like, yeah. there's cops here at the house. Yeah. I, I tried to pull into the house and I got pulled over. And then, I don't know. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Hello, man. Driving, bro. Hi, it's Hey, so, um, your son's not in any trouble right now. Um, he's just being detained, detained for right now. Um, so, the truck that he's driving uh, matches the description of uh, an armed robbery that took place in the city today. Well, like I said, it, it just matched your description, so uh, we're just so he's on he's under arrest, but the police the police department wants to talk to him. Okay, he's a minor. You will not have to do without the That's that's fine. I, like I said, we're just we're just holding him for Espinola Police Department to get here. Where is here? Um, it's just outside the house. We're at the intersection of 106 and 76. Okay, so did it happen today? Okay, that's fine. What's up? That happened today? Yeah. Where was that's that at? Fine. So in the city, but your truck was like uh, is given. Yeah. Oh. It was. It was so just, yeah, I understand that, man. But the information we got and everything—that's that's what we got, you know. But he's also not. We didn't mean to scare you that bad, but. So it's the same truck? Oh yeah, same. Well, it was a. That's a plate that we were given. Really? Yeah. Huh? His stepmom Lisa told the cops that he was indeed in school and that they are not legally allowed to talk to him as he is still considered a minor. His mother calls him again, and this is what she had to say to Officer Rodriguez. Mom, is that your mom? Yes, yeah, my mom. Oh, okay. Huh? I'm at the house. Here's a cop. He wants to talk to you. Hello. Ma'am. Hello? Hello? I don't think he's on speaker. No. Hello? I'm talking. Oh, sorry, ma'am. I couldn't hear you. So, I guess there was a confusion, but this was a truck that we were given out to uh, look out for. I am livid. You know what? No, I understand that. And you guys have him. 
I understand, ma'am, but that's the information that we're given, you know, so that's 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 why we you pulled them over. Your information before. Yes, ma'am, uh, but that's the information that we were I given. Your name, and I, need, I need your badge number. Okay, Officer Rodriguez. And what is your badge number? 7135 oh, one, now. 135? Yes, ma'am. You will be hearing from my attorney. This okay. Is that's fine, ma'am. You literally detained him and put him in handcuffs. He's a fucking minor. No, I understand, but at the time we don't know that, so that's why we were that's why we were rolling for it. What are you doing with him now? So he's gonna get released. He's gonna go home. Ridiculous. You yes, ma'am. Hearing from my attorney. Okay, that's fine. What is your What is your matter? Is this Espanol PD or who the hell are you? So Espanol PD is the one that received the call, and they're the ones that put out the bolo for the vehicle. Uh, this is state police. This is ridiculous. Nothing in your right mindset, minor? No, ma'am. Well, we don't know. We don't know because the vehicle is not registered to him. It's registered to you, right? It's registered to his dad who has the same Right. Well, your, your, your name is Lisa Pacheco? No, her name is Daniel. Yeah. Name is Daniel. Uh, Detective Anaya will call you and he will answer more. Espanol Police Department. He'll answer more more questions that you have. You know it's illegal to detain a minor. That's so, parent present. You realize that, right? No, ma'am. So uh, that's we have probable cause to pull over the vehicle. So that was a probable cause, you know. I want to so, see a probable cause. Am I trying to release you? That okay, that's cause. fine. That's fine, ma'am. So, so you, you have him call me. Give me, let me get you. Didn't even ask for my cell phone number. So how the hell do you expect him to call? So me? you you can call uh, Detective Anaya, Espanol PD. So just call Espanol PD Police Department and have a uh, Detective Anaya give you a call. No, he, you're the one that did this. You did this. He didn't do that. So. So he's the one. He's the one that put out that bolo, ma'am. He's the one that said said for us to look for that vehicle. So he will answer more questions. We just. I want to know why you did this. Because, because you didn't, you didn't get like I right said, now. because like I said. How old he was? So we, ma'am, whenever, 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 excuse me. Give me your supervisor's name. Okay, so it's Lieut to Lieutenant Casals. Fucking ridiculous. Okay. Go, go ahead, ma'am. That's fine. There you go. What's up? You're good to go, bro. Yeah, yeah. No worries. Even though Adam was released, his mom did not hold back on letting him get the justice he deserves. She had filed a lawsuit against the Espanola Police Department as it later came out that it was their mistake that had led to Adam's truck being targeted with a bolo. Adam was illegally searched and wrongfully imprisoned. He had five officers pointing guns at him from the time he got told to step out of the car. It's unclear how much Adam asked for in the settlement, but the mayor of the city is refusing to comment on the matter. Now for the time, officers had come together to take take down a guy that had stolen a car. They were on the lookout for a vehicle that had been stolen and located it driving into a cul-de-sac. Here's how the stop initially went down. 1033, you're on the Pasco. It's a cul-de-sac facing west. Cul-de-sac facing west, again, looping at some point. Is there going to elect the one at this time? 63 boys, 97. 63 boys, 97. Stop, stop, please stop, please stop, please stop. Five boys, going 97, advise when there's sufficient units, please. You see, we're gonna have a uh, nothing else. We're gonna start extracting to shut down the uh, for the code three. We're gonna be uh, call outs for the driver right now. Making call outs for the driver. Gonna be uh, in custody. We're gonna be uh, making call outs now for the uh, two additional passengers. Driver's in custody. Making call outs for additional passengers. If we have uh, occupants of the house coming out right now, we're trying to get to go back inside right now. They're in the middle of an arrest and we hear a woman shouting in the distance. This was his wife. She was more concerned about her son who was still in the car. Hey, listen, let me know when it's 
Oh, I'm sorry, my man. Did somebody die that? I, I get it. This way. I have I no criminal back. record. I have no criminal record. Get back! Get yeah. back! Stay Stay back. back. Yeah. Help me! Hey! Matt! Get back in your house! Get in! Matt, get in the house! Get in the house before you get arrested! You need to go in the house. Everything's under control. You need to go in the house, man. You're good. Everything's gonna be fine. We'll talk to you in a minute. Yeah, you're delaying everything. You're making everything worse. Get back in the house. Get back in the house! No one's going to be hurt right now. All we need you to do is go back inside the house so we can approach the situation. That's it. Please go back inside the house now. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands, Keep your hands up. up. Face away from us. Face away. Walk back to the Hands up. Keep your hands up. Now someone's got to go inside your house or you're going to jail. Let me, can I got my car? No, leave your phone! I see all of your Turn around! Turn around! Turn around! Unload it! Unload it! Unload it! Unload that! Yeah! He's right now! Get on your knees! On your knees! Brody, come here! Brody! Come here! Brody! 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 I'll take over over here. Step back. Come back or send my boy. Come back. Keep coming back. Coming back. All right. Get on your knees. There's no one in the car. Man, you need to, you need to get out of this situation. You go back inside. We'll explain everything in just a minute. It's a soul. Starting things off today is 20-year-old Emily Weinman. In May of 2021, Emily was minding her business on the beach with her friend when she was approached by Officer Cannon, Officer Hillman, and Officer Jordan. These officers have made Emily perform a breathalyzer test after they saw alcoholic bottles near them. Take a deep breath and blow into that, alright? Alright, do me a favor, try one more time. Deep breath, don't put it, don't go too so far in. Is there a standard problem on your business? Alright, where's your hand at? You have a phone number? Wait. How old are you? I know that didn't come up positive. I didn't take a drink of anything, so. Alright. Alright, take a deep breath and keep blowing. Keep going, keep going, keep going. The officer that is performing the test seems adamant on getting one of them to come up positive, but he fails. He then resorts to doing this. Go grab her real quick, we're gonna have them pour that all out. How are you gonna let us go? We didn't even drink alcohol. 
Uh, uh, what was her aunt at? You're, you're, allowed to carry, you're allowed to carry alcohol. You're allowed to carry alcohol. That's interesting. You're not allowed to drink it. And we not open drink display. It. Of what? It's possession open consumption. Display. It's not open. Open display means you. What do you mean? That doesn't mean anything. You can see anything. it, yes. Okay, you can see it, and uh, we're not drinking. Five, four, three. Emily and her friend are explaining to the cops that the alcohol that is there is for their eye. None of the bottles were opened, and both breathalyzers came back negative for alcohol. So why don't these officers just leave them alone? Your aunt didn't disrespect you. I didn't do anything to get written up, did now I? Now you're closing the scene. Now you're closing the scene. I'm you want it? Scene. All right. I'll give you one more chance to give me your last name. Let's just be cooperative. Okay. You can't lock me up. Okay. I didn't disrespect you. Okay. And you're and I you don't need to write my name down either because I didn't want to do it. You're mad because we thought we were drinking. Alright, I'll give you one. Okay. First of all, you you're in possession. Where, where's your aunt at then? She's on her way. Okay, what's your last you name? You could wait here. That's like you wasted your time coming over here. You could wait here for her. Okay, what's your last name? You don't need my last name. That's it. I'm done with you. Do you have cuffs on you? No, man. Get over don't here. Don't talk to me. Yo. Don't talk to me. All right. You're about to get dropped. Yo, don't talk to me. Man. You don't. Get over here. What are you doing? Don't. Five oh four three. Send me another unit. Stones are in the no, beach. We got one resist. No! I can't believe you. My neck. Get off of me! What are you doing? Not it! Not the other. They're choking me. Scalinger in the beach. I need another unit. They're choking me, man. I'm not choking. Yes, you are. You. Get the off me, yo. That's it. Back up! Back up! Get over here! You're not allowed to beat me like that! Stop! I'm a woman! It doesn't matter! It doesn't matter! You're not allowed to hit me like that! It's happening! You're not allowed to hit me and choke me like that! You're not allowed to hit me like The officer resorted to violence. He went ahead and arrested Emily without any proof of her drinking, just sealed bottles next to her. He then continued to hit her after she explained that she did nothing wrong. Then another one of her friends came to stick up for her. How old is she? She just punched him when he punched her in her face though. Yeah, well she tried kicking us, so that's it. Yeah, she did. I gotta yeah, it's fine. I gotta stop her for LO for Andre's drinking. She said she's 20. She had twisted tees. She wouldn't give me her last name. So I said, hey, if you're not gonna give me your information, you're gonna be locked up. She tried walking away from me. When she tried walking away from me, I tried grabbing her. She tried kicking at us, so we slammed her on the ground. She kicked him. And then I just start, I hit her a couple times, and then I put her in cuffs, locked her up. Okay. And I came out, I was backing everybody else. Well, why don't you guys uh, walk? Take a walk! Why don't you guys go inside then? After this incident, Emily sued the department that was responsible for her arrest and assault. She took them to court and this was her outcome. A settlement has been reached regarding this violent beach confrontation in Wildwood from Memorial Day weekend 2018. It involved a woman who was 20 at the time and two seasonal police officers. Court documents show Emily Weinman will receive $325,000 from the lawsuit, which claimed the officers, quote, brutally and senselessly assaulted her. She was confronted for unopened alcohol. The officers claimed she kicked them during the dispute. Weinman pleaded guilty to disorderly conduct. The officers were not charged. Moving on now, on February 12th of 2021, at about 2.52 a.m., Officer Katie Proffer of the University of Central Florida Police Department had approached a vehicle that was sitting idle in a parking lot. In that vehicle was a woman named Sophia. She didn't know what was coming her way after this happened. Hello, I'm Officer Proffer. How are you guys? Hi, how are you? Good. Hi. All right, so what's going on today? Were you yeah. fell asleep in here or what? Yeah, honestly, yeah. just fell asleep. Okay, have you been drinking? Honestly. Yeah. Honestly. Okay, where'd you come from? Um, just came from a house party and we figured it was safer to sit here. We were dropped off. I didn't feel comfortable driving, so we were sitting in my car. Okay. And I didn't want to drive. 
Okay, do you you guys both also, live here? Or? I don't live here. We open containers in the car. Okay. We just have a Celsius and a Monster. They're just yeah, energy drinks. Yeah, I had that earlier. I work. We don't have anything open in the car. No. I just didn't want to drive intoxicated, so we're just sitting in the car. Okay, you're so you're both students. Okay. Did you get? Did he get your IDs and stuff already? Okay. All right. Um, yeah. Hang on one second for me. Sophia and her friend had been upfront with the officers and told them the full story. It's now up to Officer Prophet to decide what to do with the situation. Sophia was not driving and mentioned that she had not driven from the house party to a parked car, so Officer Prophet has no reason to charge her with a DUI. Let's see how her conversation with her commanding officer went. Now, can I go off for a minute? Okay. I'm just um. Let's go back. Okay. So since they are parked here, can you still get them for? Because they're behind the wheel of the operating. Yeah, operating wheel. All right. Would you like some of the more diverse DUI to assist you? Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to want. Officer Brother is talking to her commanding officer and asks him if she can go off for a minute while touching her body cam, meaning she wants to turn her camera off. The whole conversation they had just proved that she definitely wants to arrest these students for a DUI. Okay, what is your name again? My name is Sophia. Sophia? Okay. I'm gonna have you, if you don't mind, to step out of the vehicle and talk to me behind the car for a bit. Alright. For driving under the influence, you're all you have to be is up, you're in the driver's seat, so you're in control of an operating motor vehicle. Yes, ma'am. So it's still illegal to be sitting in the driver's seat with you drinking. Okay. So are you willing to participate in some standard field sobriety exercises for us? Do I have to? I mean, it's up to you. It's your choice. But then if you don't, then we have to make a decision based on our evidence right now. Um, how old are you? I'm 19. 19, okay. So, yes, I mean, you can either participate in the standard field sobriety exercises, or like I said, we just make our determination now upon, you know, speaking to you and our evidence, what we smell, what we see, right. and we can go from there, determine if we have enough to make an arrest or not. So, I mean, I'm willing to try. Okay. You're willing to participate in the standard field sobriety exercises? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm going to read you some instructions real quick, okay? Officer Prophet had then read the instructions out to Sophia and made her do some field sobriety tests. This is how that went. Okay, do not move your head. Do you understand these instructions? Yes, ma'am. Follow the pen. Yes. Alright. Yeah, stand with your arms yep. down by your Sorry, it's really cold. Okay. No, no, keep your head still. Look straight. Come over here. University. Alright, you may begin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Turn. Yep. Is that okay? Okay, keep going. One. Alright, you ready? Yes, ma'am. Alright, you may begin. 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, Go ahead and put your hands behind your back. You're going to be aggressive to the why? Because you are operating a motor vehicle. Today we'll be looking at just one of the times an officer bullied a woman with dementia, but thankfully got what he deserved in the end. On June 26, 2020, a 73-year-old woman named Karen Garner had allegedly left a Walmart store without paying $13.88 for a few items she picked up. An employee had chased after her to retrieve the products, which resulted in Karen doing this. Keep in mind, she suffers from dementia.
Walmart then sent Karen on her way but called the police on her after she pulled one of the employee's masks off his face. Officer Austin Hopp was the first to spot Mrs. Garner. He was watching her picking flowers from a field while she was walking home. This is how he decided to approach her. Alright, let's stop ma'am. I don't think you want to play it this way. Ma'am. Please stop. You want to stop with lights on, siren? Stop. You just left Walmart. Do you need to be arrested right now? No, no, no. Okay. Let's stop. Come on. Come on. I'm going home. No, no, no. On the ground. Stay on the ground. On the ground. On the ground. On the ground. Bravo 242. After a short struggle, she's now detained. Come on. I am code four. Why did you do that? I told you to stop. You don't get to act this way. Come on, stay on the ground. <sighs> Officer Hop was nothing but cruel. He had zero patience and he immediately chose to use force against Mrs. Garner. He actually dislocated her arm in the process of arresting her. He repeatedly pushed her to the ground while she was clearly confused and frightened. Keep in mind, Mrs. Garner only weighs 38 kilograms. Let's stand up. Why are you doing this, ma'am? Alright. Stand up. I'm not doing it. Right now, you're resisting, which is not going to fly with me. Before that, you tried to steal from Walmart. And they caught you and took the stuff back. Stand up. Oh, I'm not going in. <laughs> Why are you fighting with me? And why are you trying to slip the cuffs off? I'm going home. Stop. I'm going home. No, you're not. Are you finished? Are you finished? We don't play this game. You understand me? If you try to kick me, oh, this is going to be bad. I'm going home. Stop. I'm going home. Hey. Then Officer Dariah Jalali arrives on the scene. Let's see how she responds to her partner's behavior during this arrest. I'm going home. Ow. Ow. Are you finished? I'm going home. You. Right, I just go to the ground. On the ground. On the ground. Why are you doing this? Let me see what she is. Yeah, I know. I'm just trying to search her real quick. No, we wrestled for a minute. And she was almost got her handcuffs off. I'm going home. No, you're not. All right, stand up. I'm going home. Stand up. I'm going home. Mrs. Garner repeatedly said, I'm going home. Did those officers not for one second think she might have an illness? No, they continued to use force and abuse her during her arrest. All right, sit down. I'm going home. Sit down. Sit I'm down. going home. Get in the car. In you go. Do not right. hook onto him. I'll come on the other side and grab her. Wait. Wait. What? 
What are you doing? Get out of here. This is not your business. Then a civilian intervened after an officer told him it's not his business. Come on. Get in. There you go. What's that? Huh? Who's my sergeant? Yeah. Okay, well, first, I can tell you that. Sergeant Metzler, he's at the police department. You can uh -huh. go talk to him if you have an issue. Yeah, give me your car so I can put a report. Okay. I see you there, how you throw that little kid. Little kid? Well, I don't know. He's not a little a kid. kid. And this he, is was, what he was just walking, and uh -huh. I see you, how she you grab him. Stole from Walmart and refused to stop, refused to listen to lawful orders, and to fight me. This is what happens when you fight the police. I have to use force to safely detain her. That's what this is. This isn't just some random act of aggression. Oh, well, we I don't know if you way, realize that. Yeah, well, the way that I see it from over there, okay. you know, I was like, that's no... But you see, you don't know the whole situation, that's the thing. Yeah, you know, but it's like... But you knowing see, the situation, do you feel differently know. now? Oh, yeah. But that's you know, it. like seeing it from there, that, that guy just walking... Yeah, I get that. Know. I get that. So when I went to go tr grab her and talk to her, she started running, leaving, pulling away from me, well, trying to fight me. Well, that's the thing, I didn't see it running, exactly. you know. Exactly, so before you go to a snap judgment, you gotta get off the facts. But right here, she wasn't running. I get she, that. I see her walking right yeah. there, you pull right. over. I gotta deal with walking. this, you hang tight, okay? Get your feet in the car. Alright, here, let me see your feet. Okay, let's uh, let's get her out over here on the ground. We can hobble her, and then we'll get her in the car. On the ground. On the ground. On the ground. Stop doing that. I'm on. I'm on. All right. Okay. All right. You want to try to get her in the car again? Or we got more people. That's Officer Hop completely disregarded that man and went to tie Mrs. Garner's feet together. He then got approached by another officer. Yep. Right, sit, sit down. Okay. You got him. I have this. Hey, we're gonna sit in the car. Okay. We'll get it. Oh, my credit card. <laughs> yep, so I went up and I found her. Oh. Can we catch her here walking on foot? Yeah, she's walking right here. The Malide siren, she kept walking. Said, please stop. Stop. And she looked at me, kept going, saying, No, I'm going home. So I went up to grab her, started pulling away from me and stuff like that. So I was by myself, so I went to the ground. We struggled and rolled for a little bit. Um, I see that. Yeah. yeah. And then I got her detained. She showed up while I had her up against the car because I couldn't get her in the car and right. all that stuff. So we struggled over there for a little while. And then we brought her into this car because mine was locked. Yeah and she wouldn't get in, she'd get in, wiggle out, get in, wiggle out, all this stuff. Okay. And then finally, well, you know, we just get to the ground, get her in a hobble. Has she been drinking or something? Or? I have no idea, she hasn't talked to me much. Okay. After this, they took Mrs. Garner to the station to process her arrest. The way they treated her throughout the whole process was horrific. Hold that for me. And that's a good idea. She, she's a frail little thing, but she's riley. Oh, 
You going to the female side or male side? Okay. We got the unlocked cell. There's an unlocked cell. I didn't know that. Hey, you got the door open. Come on, Karen. I'm gonna run. You're gonna run? Oh, good thing we got the hot one. You guys grab her arms? Yep. We got her. Oh. That's okay. Ow. We got you. We got you. I was gonna pay for it. But you didn't. Where do, you, where do we want her at? Right here. Okay. Probably want to take I that hobble off and leave it in there. I was gonna pay for yeah. it. I was gonna pay for it. Put your knees on the bench. Put your knees on the bench. I just lay her flat. Okay. There we go. Mm. Oh, it's gonna pay for it. Do not kick me. Oh, pay for it. Sit you up. Come on, let's sit. Dude, don't kick anybody. I can. You stay right there. You should cover it up. Yeah. Got that. Oop. I'm gonna pay for it. I'm gonna pay for it. Hey. I got her. Anybody get kicked or hit? They only gave Mrs. Garner medical attention six hours after her arrest. The DA had launched an investigation into the violent arrest, and Karen's family had also filed a lawsuit against Loveland PD for violating her civil rights. Once the lawsuit became known, the city manager Stephen Adams had addressed the public and said this. First and foremost, the Loveland Police Department, as well as the City of Loveland organization, are sorry for what happened to Karen Garner. He then proceeded to say this, We sincerely regret that this incident ever occurred and that officers in our department were responsible for how Ms. Garner was treated that day. Then Officer Hop and Officer Dariah Jalali had turned themselves in for their actions. The other officer had resigned from his job. Courtroom. The judge today only permitted still photography, but the images say quite a lot. Wearing a lime jailhouse outfit, his hands and legs chained, former police officer Austin Hopp made his first court appearance. Hopp is accused of breaking 73-year-old Karen Garner's arm during an arrest last June. He failed to report the injuries and his use of force to the superiors. Garner, who lives with dementia, sat in a cell for hours without medical assistance as Hopp is heard laughing with his peers about the video of that injury. Yesterday, a warrant was issued for the arrest of Hop and his partner, Daria Jalali. CBS4 was first to break the news today that both had been arrested and booked into the Larimer County Jail. The police chief, Robert Tyser in Loveland, says he does support the charges that his former officers now. Yeah, Mackenzie Jalali stood in the courtroom against the wall with her hands behind her back. Her family members wiping away tear from their, tears from their faces as she was placed in handcuffs by Larimer County deputies and then taken away to serve a 45-day straight sentence in jail. They also went on to say the lawyers argued that she was set up to fail by the Loveland Police Department, adding that she recently underwent a neurological exam that showed she was mentally incapable of making quick and appropriate decisions in situations like she was in with Karen Garner, but the judge firmly did not take that bait when it came down to sentence. They turned from officers to criminals overnight. Austin Hopp had received a plea deal from the court in which he accepted, so his final sentence was five years in prison and three months parole. As for Dariah Jalali, she was sentenced to 45 days in prison for an abysmal failure to protect and serve. This is how her family reacted to the sentences that were given. The lack of empathy in the action of the officers that were involved. This isn't just only affecting my mom and my family. It's also affecting this whole city of Loveland. I feel like these are pretty minimal crimes that they put against them. And there's a whole list of charges that they could have put against these officers. 
I feel like they think that they're above the law and they're the ones that are supposed to be protecting all of us. I just want justice for my mom. The first eight seconds of the video that you watched before Hop took her down is Karen Garner. She's walking, she's happy, she's smiling. We haven't seen that since. She doesn't smile since then. She just is so overwhelmed. We've talked to her caretakers about her PTSD from all of this and it has truly changed the progression of how her dementia was going. She loves, she loves picking flowers and buying flowers. And this is for her. It then later came out that a settlement was reached. Today, we are announcing a settlement reached in Karen Garner's federal civil rights lawsuit against the city of Loveland and its officers for their horrific assault upon her for their failure to provide her with medical care for hours afterwards, and their supervisor's blatant and appalling efforts to cover it all up. She was 73. She had dementia. She was one of the most vulnerable members of our community, and she was carrying wildflowers. Her crime, she had forgotten to pay for $13.88 items from Walmart. $13.88 is the business interest that Loveland believed was worth inflicting this atrocity. Today, they pay Ms. Garner $3 million. The amount of this settlement is likely record-breaking for a civil rights case that doesn't involve death or permanent disfigurement. And not only does its amount send a powerful message, but the speed with which it was obtained does on behalf of this family, this incident shocked us by exposing us to the lowest form of human behavior and indecency, particularly by people that should be respected, people that should know how to show respect, and an inability just to do the right thing. But conversely, this family was also overwhelmed by the support and the love of people in the city of Loveland, as well as around the world. It was overwhelming and got us through some of the darkest times, and for that, we say thank you. We can't express how grateful that we are. The people of Loveland are the heart of that city, and now we're able to have a voice to join them to call for more reform and call for more justice from the Loveland Police Department and the City Council. Thank you. Share your thoughts about the settlement and the chapter that is the settlement will help fund the 24 seven care that we have her in. And that will be a big help towards that care. And if I could ask you a question as well, how is she doing and is she aware of any of this that happened in the first part? How is she doing today? How is she coping? And does she know what happened? Um, she has good days and bad days. Um, just like anybody with dementia, it's basically you're losing them twice. So you lose them through the dementia and then we're gonna lose her again, which hurts. Starting off, we have Lorraine police officer, Elliot Palmer, who was patrolling the streets when he saw some dogs running loose on the road. Moments later, a woman named Melanie Kearns came over and held the dogs. She held three of them. Meanwhile, one named Dixie ran towards the officer who did this. Get back! Get back! Get me a bunch of cars out here. We got a bunch of people coming out. Get back! Get back! Why did you do it? Yeah, I'm get back! You. Okay, your dog charged. Get back! Get ma'am. No, I need I'm you to not. get back. Ma'am, I need you to get back. Oh my god! We're a cat What's doing it? I want your name, I want your badge, everything! Palmer, oh god, 101. Right. I couldn't do that. Everybody get back. Everybody get back.
Everybody get back. Get back. Everybody get back. Get back. Get back. Get back. The officer shot the dog multiple times and he died of his injuries on the sidewalk. Melanie's mother, Tammy Kearns, approached the officer claiming that he killed her dog. Moreover, people started to gather around the police. After this incident, the Lorraine Police Department carried out an internal investigation, and all the evidence gathered would be presented to the Lorraine Police Employee Review Board. That panel will decide if the officer will face discipline. Meanwhile, the family has threatened to sue the Lorraine Police Department for Dixie's death. Next, we have a Loveland couple, Wendy Love and Jay Ham, traveling with their dogs. They stopped in front of a private property and the owner called the cops stating that they were trespassing. As the cops arrived on scene, one of the dogs named Herkimer, who was their 14 month year old puppy, jumped out of the car and approached officer Matt Grashorn, who did this. Get back to the truck! He just moved my baby! Why did you have to shoot him? He's fine, he's a puppy! Get to your truck! I didn't know that! He's a puppy! Can I see him? Get to the truck! Please let me see him! Please, oh my god, let me see him! Get in the truck! Oh my god, please let me see him! He's dying! Ma'am, just get back to your truck. If he's dying, let me see him! He's dying! Okay, okay. Ma'am, get away. He will bite you. He's hurt. He will bite you. He's hurt. How do you kill him? He will bite you. He's hurt. Jay. Sir, tell her to get away. He will bite her. He's hurt. Maybe you ought to have your dogs in your truck then. Is this your property? He was in the truck. He jumped out. I'm sorry. That's why I'm here, because you're trespassing. Can we take him to a bed? Please, can we take him to a bed? Ma'am. Please. You're not going to be able to help him. Please let me take him to a bed. You're not gonna be able to help Please, him. Please, sir. You're not gonna be able to help him. I need to stay there. I need you to just, you can't believe you just did this. You have no idea what this taught me. Right there, far back. Far back. Right there. Sir, I don't need you cussing and yelling at me no more. Why don't you get your other dogs managed? Stay there. Okay. Wait for me to get some more help and we'll help you, okay? okay? Officer Grashorn shot the puppy two times, once in the head and once in the side, and was extremely insensitive towards the issue. He didn't even let them take the puppy to the vet when it was still alive, making matters worse. Yeah, you thanks for telling me how to do my job. Just stay there. Herky, oh my god! Herky, god, please let me take him to a vet. Just stay there. Stay there. Can I call my friend? Yeah, no, Kelly, and he's a pop in love. He lives in love, and I'd like to talk to him. He's not. I'm going to, honey. Please help me with him. I can't. I can't. Please, you can't do this. Stay there. say no one dog stops one keeps coming that's I what's going to happen I know, man I know, but i'm not in the business to get bit i know i wanted you to shock them if anything we, that doesn't work like that man that's a bummer it is a terrible bummer yeah, i don't want to shoot nobody's dog it's the first time i shot anybody's dog in 14 years 
The couple didn't even go near 20 feet of the building and were still charged with trespassing. As the cops kept wasting their time, their puppy Herkimer was finally allowed to go to the vet. However, he was in lots of pain and after treating him for some time, they eventually decided to let him rest because of what he was going through. No, no, you get shot. Really? <laughs> I'm just joking around. Bring the truck over. Instead of moving a carrier, you'll lose more blood. Bring the truck so we can load him right in there. The couple said they contacted the LPD after the incident, but nothing came out. They have filed a civil lawsuit against the LPD and the officers involved in the shooting. Two days after the lawsuit went public, the city of Loveland and the Loveland Police Department have announced to open an investigation into the incident. It's some bullshit that nothing seems to happen until a lawsuit's filed. Okay. Moving on, we have a Miami Day police officer who came over to the house of Lazaro Abraham when responding to a call regarding dogs barking. Soon after, two dogs approached the officer and he started to back off. One of the dogs came over to the officer again and he did this. <laughs> The black dog died after he was shot six times by the unidentified officer. Soon after the video surfaced, the officer was assigned administrative duties and the department is fully investigating the case. Meanwhile, the family is preparing to file a lawsuit against the officer and the police department.